Oh, this artist I'm about to bring in, everyone knows him. He's known as the Prince of Praise. His new song, I Can't Give Up, is top at the uh, at the Billboard Gospel Charts and on the airplay of the Gospel Music Charts. He's the one and only Byron Cage. Good morning, sir. Good morning, my brother. How are you in Philadelphia, PA? <laughs> I'm all right, man. Shaking Good. things up over here, man. Just um, loving with the, uh, the, you know, just loving what God is doing. I gotta jump into the song because this song is actually, as you already know, I'm on a secular station. When I, when we play this song, I can't give up. It's something that everyone can relate to. It's like you went, it's like you went back in time and pulled something out, man. You know, what made you cut this song, man? Man, I wrote that song in in 2019. And uh, because we were going through the, the uh, things in life, you know, I, but I didn't realize that we were getting ready to transition into a pandemic. I had no clue at all uh, wow. because I wrote that song before uh, the pandemic. I also wrote the title of my album, Isolation, not even knowing we would be going to isolation five months later. So God was just giving me songs to encourage his people because they were going through things. And, you know, that no matter what you're going through, you can't give up. You can't give in. You know, I won't turn back. I'm built to win. You know, the Lord gave me those so trials often come. But there's still a race for me to run, you know, and that part where we say he's keeping me alive, man, I just think it exploded uh, in you know, 2020 and 2021 because people needed to hear that message at that particular time. And so I'm really grateful to God. And I appreciate you uh, absolutely for spinning it there in that area and, and for even putting it on the secular station. That means that means the world to me. I appreciate that. Amen. You know, I'm, you know, talking to a lot of artists right now. You know, and, and, you know, everybody, it's so funny how a lot of artists are saying like, hey, I didn't know the, you know, pandemic was coming, but God gave me something that was so apropos or so that, that just segue into there, like for us to be in this, I call it seclusion or hiding, you know, you know, waiting for God, you know, give us the next step. But why you, why you were in that, this, this two year incubator that we all in? What else, what did God, what is God saying to you here? Like, because now you have your songs to come out. What is God saying to you right now? Man, as I'm working on a new CD, this is the, the song that the Lord gave me called The Strength to Go On. And um, just songs that's building us up, building, increasing our faith to know that, of course, we know Hebrews 11, it says, um, now faith is the substance of the things that we hope for, and it's the evidence of the things that we don't see. Uh, but just because I don't see it doesn't mean that God's not going to do it. So uh, this year of 2022, you know, God is opening up brand new doors. And um, I'm just looking forward to seeing what he's going to do and the message that he's going to give our people that we can continue on in him to know that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper and that all things are going to work together for the good. Amen. Amen. Uh, I mean, it's so apropos. Um, I, I just have to take you back a little bit about, your, you know, um, I'm looking at you, you know, because we're married to Christ. And I have to hit your book, you know what I mean? I just want to know a little bit. Can you just share a little bit about your book? I do, uh, The Marriage Between the Pastor and, uh, and, the, and the Minister of Music. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I wrote that book at the close of my uh, tenure after 30 years of being a full-time minister of music. Uh, and I chronicled the years that I served churches and how pastors and musicians uh, can have a harmonious relationship in the pulpit where the pastor doesn't feel like the, the musicians are rebellious and the musicians feel like the pastor was jealous because the choir got a better response. I mean, there's all kinds of misconceptions that we get in church. And a lot of times uh, it can become disruptive uh, to the service to where, you know, you don't have the pastor and the music person on the same page. You know, that could be all types of uh, hindrances that God's people uh, won't receive everything they're supposed to receive in a corporate worship experience. And so the book is funny. I tell really funny stories that happen, but I also give really key nuggets that how you can have a harmonious relationship and that marriage between a pastor and a, music, and a musician can really birth major things in a church. But if they're bucking heads, then uh, it'll just be, it'll be a problem until somebody changes it. Yeah, you, you know what? No one's really odd, like right now, and the reason why I, I want to also bring that up, because, you know, uh, some people may not know, but I also was bringing it up because I look at how the body, how things are structured now. Like, a lot of people need hope. Mm -hmm. And 
the minister of music is now probably be more called on in secular arenas. They'd be called on and going into odd places. You know, I know I'm setting up some stuff to do this summer. That's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of outside activity dealing with from seniors to the youth. And I'm just saying like, y'all are going to be sort of like pastors outside. You know what I mean? Like, like that mm -hmm. voice, because, you know, cause you're called to sing and then you, you know how when y'all start singing, man, that word start coming up out of you. So, mm -hmm. you know, do you see that, you know, how do you see that coming, you know, coming to fruition right now? Well, you know, it's like what Paul said in the New Testament when he said that uh, we become all things to all people that we can win them for Christ. Um, there are some people that criticize me for being on Jimmy Fallon uh, with Chance the Rapper, but he sampled one of my songs, Holy, 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 and he Amen. asked me what I come and sing the song um, when the praises go up. And so, you know, I went on Jimmy Fallon with, with Chance the Rapper and everybody was like, oh my God, Byers with a secular artist. But, you know, when I talked to the young man, he grew up in the church, he loves the Lord. And, you know, his music is not, you know, in my opinion, when I listen to his lyrics and stuff, it's nothing that I hear that I'd be like, oh my goodness, you know, uh, he's rapping about funny things and different things. And so I, I believe that there is a light that I can be no matter where I go. But I do pick and choose and make sure that I am discerning to make sure that I believe that that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't take every opportunity, but Amen. those that I believe that I can do and that the Lord will give me uh, the grace to do, I do those. Amen. Yeah, I, he I hear what you're saying, because uh, basically that, that's become like a real huge topic of uh, going back to Tasha when she did it. And you know what I mean? <laughs> she, yeah, she did hers with Nicki Minaj, though. I, I don't think I could have done mine with Nicki Minaj, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, just, I, I know, I know. I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just saying it, it's something that, that's come up. But you, but you know what's great, though? But I, I love what you, like, you just said it, and you said it with ease, and you didn't say it with any, like, condemnation. You said, hey, look, I couldn't, I, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Because there are places that we, you know, that we can't tread sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just say, hey, and, and I still love you. I still work with you, but... Mm -hmm. I can't go that route. No, that's that's really to me. That's where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so yeah, Absolutely. most 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 definitely. But you know, you you being a worship leader right now, and um, you know, worship is a little bit different from um singing like traditional like like gospel because worship all it seems like the Holy Spirit just arrests you and you can't do nothing else but worship. You can't go back and do enough check. Now, and I think it's so needed right now. What do you think God is saying right now through the worshiper in in the world? Well, you know, worship is it's funny that we're having this conversation. I'm putting together my curriculum now because I'm teaching a course at Virginia Baptist Union uh, University starting next month. And I'm teaching on worship and the importance of understanding that praise is not a fast song, worship is a slow song, but they are postures that we have. But anything that has breath, the Bible says to praise the Lord. But those yeah. who worship them must worship them in spirit, which is his divine nature, and truth, which is his word. That's why we as worshipers have to always come into a lifestyle, is what I tell people. Um, Amen. Uh, I worship God every morning at four in the morning, between four and six. I get up and I worship and I praise and I worship God and pray for uh, those who God has called me to pray for because that's my lifeline. It is my lifestyle. Like I take a shower every day. Like I brush my teeth every day. Worship Amen. is not foreign to me. The presence of the Lord is not foreign to me. I know his presence when it's in the building and uh, I know when I'm being entertained, you know, and that's fine. Gospel music has a, a genre, uh, in our genre, I should say, there is a form of entertainment that absolutely happens. But worship is different because if people are coming to the show to see you, that's you. But if they're coming to worship, worship is to God. That's adoration, extolling, and, yeah. and giving them all the glory that's due to his name. And the focus is not on you or what you need to get from him. Yeah. The focus is just only on him, just to give him all the worship. Exactly. That's definitely yeah, yeah. Because praise is what? you've done for me but worship is uh who you are so it's, right. it's a it, it's a it's a definite like distinction between the two and that's mm -hmm. why i was asking you because basically you know um you being you being a worshiper and you know you're going you're going back out in the world it's like it just seemed like god is just doing something different and i just love to hear you know how he's operating through different people you know because it may be a little different from you to the next person to the next person mm -hmm. you know from you to uh my man don moen who i love um, out here who's doing that worship, uh, you know, the worship music. So like right now, so you say you're working on a new project, but what else do you have coming up right now? Um, you know, I'm so excited to share, um, in, in addition to being a professor this year for the very first time, uh, I also uh, started a brand new show called The Byron Cage Show. Uh, it airs, debuts on March the 3rd. And uh, this, 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm very excited about it. I posted the commercials and stuff on my Instagram and on my Facebook. It's going to be a show that's going to be a variety show that deals with several different topics. I sing in the beginning at every show. And then we go into like the first episode is about the conspiracy theories about the vaccination and why some African-Americans especially won't get the vaccine because of things that they feel happened in the past that the CDC did uh, to that town, Alabama, where they infected uh, the men with uh, of this virus and that gave the people syphilis in that that you know region of Alabama. So there are all kinds of reasons that people, but Dr. Adi, she comes back and she really pours out, you know, because she's a medical doctor and she does work for the CDC to explain why it is important for us to do that. So I have her on there, the first show, and then I have um I've got TC Carson on the show as well. He's uh-huh. the actor that was in uh, Living Single. Uh, yeah. I have him I also have um BB Winans and I'm excited about that. Uh, he's he's on the show. Uh, I, I interviewed Moomin Gingi. People watch Owns, Ready to Love. She was one of the contestants on Ready to Love. She also sings background for Ty Trivet and myself, and she's an incredible uh, spirit, and I think some great things are going to happen to her. I also have Dr. Wow. Ken from Bravo's uh, Potomac Housewives, and so that's going to be a really, really great uh, segment. And then I have uh, Wait, from, Brackton, from, 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 I got Dawn Lewis. From, from, from Potomac. Now, who you have from Potomac? Uh, Dr. Ken. He was a psychologist. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that counseled everybody. So he's on there uh, dealing on an episode that I'm talking about mental health and, you know, the death that happened with Regina King's son and uh, uh, suicide. Yeah, yeah. You know, the mayor yeah, in Pikesville, yeah. Maryland, here in this area, he killed himself and just, you know, the whole mental. Yeah. So, so the show is not a gospel show per se. Although Amen. Because I'm an elder in God's church, I always you know, interject scriptures and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But there are secular topics that we talk about as well. And so I'm just looking so forward to it. Um, you know, you got Lance Gross uh, from um, our, our kind of people and just all kind of actors and, and, and athletes and different individuals are going to be on the show. It's going to come every Thursday at 9 p.m. And it's, it's going to start out on my Facebook Live, my Instagram Live, and Malico uh, Records. They're going to distribute it, uh, distribute, excuse me, through Malico Records on um, YouTube Live channel so wow. i'm looking forward to it between you know my followers and their followers with well over a million people that we can reach and so you know i i stepped out of faith and said let me do this i always wanted to do television i thought it would have been uh, a few years ago but i just felt the push to do it now and my pastor prophesied to me after i preached at my dad's home going uh, back last August. And um, he told me that Byron God is getting ready to open up a major door for you for television. And when God does it, you know, it's him walk through. It, it's going to be successful. God's going to bless it. And I was like, wow. And it was not a week later that I was approached by someone to take me to a television studio. And when the owner met me, he literally just was like, wow, this is what we've been waiting for. So we started filming last month and uh, yeah, I'm going to get 10 episodes in the can and then we'll just keep up. Uh, pumping it out, you know, and I pray that a network is going to pick it up and say, hey, you know what, we like this. We like this concept. It's great music. It's great um, entertainment from the celebrities and great interviews and great information uh, that we need as a people uh, because we can't be afraid to talk about certain things. We got to get before it, bring it out like depression and suicide. We can't be afraid to talk about that because it affects our community. So, So that's what I've got coming up next that I'm looking forward to. And um, I, I just appreciate you, man. Tell everybody in Philly that hasn't heard of it yet. Just let, let, them, let them know it's coming. March Amen. the 3rd. I, you know, since you said you like to talk about everything, you know, I, I, I can't let you get, get you. I have to get you this one in on you. Yeah. What do you think about CRT and the church, like the stance that the church is taking with CRT? I'm talking about in, in reference to you know, some of the things that America doesn't want, don't want to tell, like, tell history. They want to, they want, they want to embrace history, but not tell history in school. Like they got it shut down in Texas. Like, oh, you, you, you can't teach this, you get fired, you can't teach that. And um, so what do you think about that with, with the, in relationship to the church? I, I, I think it's a sad state, you know, because I have to, 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 to compare it to what got on my nerves with evangelical pastors who had African American African American members, but yet the he's, they still supported Donald Trump. And you know, it's just a it's it's crazy to think that you know someone who has been so divisive has done so many things, even with an insurrection. Um, he has just fueled 
that whole prejudice, racist kind of mentality. And, and when people don't think that they're being racist or how this can harm uh, the black community uh, because you feel like someone somehow the history is not important to be told to your children. Yeah, it's important to be told that we never forget it so we never repeat it. And I just think that it's just too bad, you know, that you're not remembering that it wasn't you but it was your great great grandfather who was lynching and hanging people and yeah. running through the streets not wanting there to be equal rights. And so, you know, I, I am just disappointed that there is a remnant of society that feels like that should be taken out of the libraries. If that's the case, then take everything out of the library. You know, don't pick and choose what you feel like you want your children to, to, to understand and to read. Amen. Explain to them, yes, our ancestors, they enslaved black people. That's what you did. You enslaved yeah. black people. You took things away from us and, and, and promised that we can come and have a better life. We can have a better life. Picking cotton yeah. and being beaten and, and working yeah. and, and, and making somebody else's industry. The slavery was a multi-million dollar industry. Yeah. And, and yeah. we got to know y'all made money off the backs of black people. You did yeah, you them wrong. You, you built it and then you did there's so many things that the, the ramifications of it was it's, it's crazy. But when you look at the structure of America and how how um what um you know european people came over and was able to benefit from the government but yet they didn't do anything for us how they re how we even rebuilt japan after bombing it and mm -hmm. still didn't want to do right by the african-american you know what i mean it, it really is um it's something but yet we we want to embrace history and talk about all the great you know forefathers but you don't want to share you know the carnage that mm -hmm. went along with it. You just want to start, you know, singing like, you know, uh, you know, uh, God bless America and the Star Spangled Banner. And, and and I'm like, well, if you got to sing that, then you have to tell the other side. Absolutely. And, and which I think is, which is yeah, so important, the, the history of, of Frederick Douglass and the 17th yeah. Amendment of the Constitution. It's just so important that we understand we stand on the shoulders of people that fought. I mean, I did not know that Frederick Douglass uh, not only was he a runaway slave, he was somebody's property. Mm -hmm. And when he moved into the East Coast, you know, he began to speak out and, you know, begin to say, this is wrong. This was promised to all people. We didn't ask to come here. You all brought us here. So mm -hmm. we have the rights, according to the 17th Amendment, that you just won't give to us. And uh, yeah. so I just marvel that, you know, we want to forget history. We can't, we can't forget. Because if we forget history, we won't know where we've come from. Yeah, and that's a problem, and and that's why you see a lot of the the, the youth doing what they do because they don't have like pastors or ministers and, you, and like you who are willing to learn and say, hey, this is part of history. We just can't like make everything right, and, and with, with you know talking about you know these certain uh, stories without and you know delving into our history, and and you'll see where a lot of the problems coming from and going forth. Even with the GI Bill, what they're trying to work on now, um, um, but um, and people already know about me. I'm disappointed in the president and, and the vice president because some things with us, they just, you know, I'm like, if you really want to make a difference, then go let some of the brothers out of jail that you locked up, mm -hmm. and then I'll start to see that you have your that your heart is is changing. You know what I mean? Don't don't just give back money that you're going to take back from people at the end of the year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. I think some things is just like smoke and mirrors. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, and no president was perfect. Even, you know, former yeah, President okay. Obama had some things oh, that, yeah. you know, some of the people were angry at him because, you know, but <laughs> I, I look at what Biden is trying to do now, even with doing the Supreme Court justice being an African-American woman, That's that great. has caused people to go crazy. And now you have bomb threats at an elementary school where the vice president's husband was supposed to speak. Or, you know, you have eight or nine HBCUs all get bomb threats because America that does not, there's not a, 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 all of America are not happy. Not at all. Our success and not our education all. and our ability to run major corporations and be presidents like you're the president there. There are a lot of people that don't want us to be able to succeed and to prosper. And so, you know, with Kamala Harris being the first a woman, an African-American woman, to be the vice president of the United States of America is huge. So not that I'm giving them a pass, but, but I am 
staying focused and I hope yeah. that they stay focused and do everything yeah. that they need to do for not just uh, African-Americans, but for all Americans and for people. Amen. No, no, what you're doing is right. It's, see, this is, you're exactly how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be able to compartmentalize our mm -hmm. thoughts and say, okay, um, I like these three things that you're doing, but these two things over here, I'm not really in, in tune with. And when we learn to be more like that, we will make a difference, you know what I mean? But when we start to pander, you know what I mean? And, or like become biased, it's like, that's not a, that's not a really a godly state to be in. It's like, cause it's like, you, you're, you're, you're saying one thing, but it's like, you're talking about both sides of your mouth. So mm -hmm. no, you, you're fine. You're fine. I, I, I understand exactly. But, um, I do thank you. I know um, my time is up with you right now. So I do. <laughs> it's good, man. It's all good. No, I do thank you for coming on. Um, can you tell everybody where they can reach you? Yes, uh, on Facebook, Byron Cage. Instagram, Byron Cage. With the real Byron Cage on Twitter. Um, Byron Cage on, um, um, what's the what's the one I'm not, I'm not on that much anymore. Where, Instagram? Club, Clubhouse. Yes, Clubhouse. everybody. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. Oh, yeah, so, Clubhouse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I call it yeah, the so, speaking center. <laughs> right, 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 right. I get a chance to, to hop on there every now and then. And, and so, yeah, those are my handles. And uh, if you just want to email me directly, it's just byroncage at AOL.com. And yes, I answer all of my things that I get from Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything. I answer my own thing. I don't have nobody sitting behind the computer pretending to be me. So it will actually be me if you send something to me. Hey, hey man, no, I, I can see how you stand behind what you say. So you don't want nobody answering for you. I already know how you. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> right, man. Can't nobody say it like I can say it if it's about me. Yeah. No, you know? I, I, I feel that of anointing on you, bro, to be the pastor, to be that, you know what I mean? To be that yeah, oratory, yes, you know what I mean? I, I hear it. I see it. I see it. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate you. God bless. Bless you too, man. Hey, everybody, it's Byron Cage, and you are listening to Praise Hallelujah with my brother D and my sister A. Keep it locked right here.